It's said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them. From the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient to the ultra-modern, it's our job to bring these stories to you, direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. I'm Laura Schmidt, and we're rediscovering China. The kingdom of bicycles is making a comeback. This is where the shared bike story started. Actually, they have a very nice business model. Songhai's offer will be free. We heard of the first shared bike company to go bankrupt. I do not see a strong case that they must combine to be one. With a dockless system, which I think is the way forward for the future. Join us as we take a look at the revolution in the kingdom of bicycles, this week on Rediscovering China. Shared bikes are being hailed as one of the four big innovations to come out of China in modern times. However, with every new innovation comes a period of growth pains. And so today on Rediscovering China, we take a look at how the country is getting to grips with this new market. Why don't you join me for the ride? The kingdom of bicycles is making a comeback. Back in the 1990s and early 2000s, China's rapid economic development was reflected on the streets by cars, which drove the bicycles away. Now, in an unexpected twist, bikes have become the symbol of a new type of economic boom. With the help of technology and the shared economy, they are reclaiming their place on the country's streets. This is Damuqiao Road Station in Shanghai's Xujiahui district. And this area is of significance because this is where the shared bike story started for China's cities. At the beginning of 2016, the very first inner city public bike was put at this spot right here. And our lives have never really been quite the same again. In just one and a half years, the shared bikes have taken most major Chinese cities by storm and now they have even started their journey abroad. Washington is one of the U.S.'s most cycling-happy cities, with 5% of commuters regularly opting for two wheels. It welcomed the arrival of the first 200 dockless shared bikes from China in September 2017. When we talk with the Washington, D.C. government, they showed very strong support on innovation and sustainability so that we are very glad to announce the partnership between us and the city to uh, try this new thing to complement the current public transportation system to serve the DC market. This week, Capital Bike Share, uh, our, our bike share program celebrated its seventh, seventh birthday. So we started in 2010 with a dock-based system. Um, since that time, and, and really in the last year or so, there's been uh, this growing opportunity to look at dock, dockless bike share, uh, so where there's not the same kind of um, infrastructure and space demands that can be a bit more flexible to respond to needs. The dock-based system is a common concept in many countries. From Washington's capital bikes to London's Boris bikes, many have been around for close to a decade. However, one thing has prevented them from going mainstream, the lack of flexibility when it comes to returning them. It's a problem Dr. Spikes have overcome with the use of smartphone and internet technology. Right, and then you want to align the QR code in the middle of that presentation window. The closer you get, the easier it is. There's actually also a flashlight component. So if you want to turn on the flashlight in the dark, it may read that code a little bit easier. At this point, the clock is starting. Once you are physically done with your ride, 
bolt from one side through the wheel of the tire to the other side to connect on both sides of the smart lock. We invented this uh, smart lock, which enables us to track real time the whole fleet, uh, knowing where they are, and help us to um, optimize our op operation. Within just 18 months of that first bike appearing in Shanghai, by September 2017, Mobike had expanded its presence to 180 cities in eight countries. The number of rides is staggering, and the reason for this is obvious considering the layout of China's mega cities. The avenues are broad, and bus stops and underground stations are far apart, so the final stroll to work or school can easily take a good 20 minutes. This long walk, popularly known as the last kilometer, is ideally completed by a shared bike. Because 然后一般的话也是在我们规划指标上一般一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共一共
？呃，我可能会膜拜多一点，因为之前那个膜拜有一个活动，就是充一百然后送一百，所以我之前充了一百之后，一直到现在没有用完。哦，呃 ，so she mentioned that it's there's a buy one hundred get one hundred for free、yeah. uh, activity. Does Ofa have anything like that? Uh, sometimes Ofa will be free. Oh, entirely free. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like they win that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it looks like in the intense bike wars that are going on right now, the winners are, at this point, the consumers. And if the bike can be ridden by more than five times a day, uh, you can collect 500 MB. And with 300 days, actually, you can actually collect 1,500 from from this one one year alone. So just con assuming 300 days of ridership versus 365 days. So based on this amount, you see that um, you, you can calculate that actually there is a business model for the bike. It's just whether at which, po at which point do you uh, not subsidize the consumer. And I think um, if, even if you don't subsidize, one MMP is per ride is actually a very compelling case. It's not uh, the consumer are willing to pay for it. Maintaining customer satisfaction requires a lot of work behind the scenes. Before a company is able to dump masses of shared bikes onto a city, obviously somebody needs to make them. Down in the far south of China in Shenzhen is the factory that produces the little yellow bikes as Ofo's two-wheelers are lovingly called by the public. The enormous demand for shared bikes has translated into some very impressive production numbers. Bike manufacturing in China is making a big comeback. According to the China Bicycle Association, more than two million shared bikes hit the country's streets in 2016. They expect that number to have skyrocketed in the course of 2017 to more than 20 million by year's end. Safe to say, China's bike factories haven't been this busy in decades. And the workers are certainly happy. These factories managers realized early on that shared bikes were going to shake up the industry in a big way. While the bike manufacturers may be profiting, the situation is not so rosy for those trying to make a living in the bike retail sector. For decades, they have been facing a downturn in private bike ownership. The decline in their sales has unsurprisingly been accelerating in the era of bike sharing. Back in Beijing, where the number of bikes surpasses most other cities, unsurprisingly, the level of chaos is among the highest in the country. This is Deng Gong, a Beijing father. Taking his little daughter out in a stroller on Beijing's chaotic streets is difficult at the best of times. But now the shared bikes are making it virtually impossible, even dangerous. Uh, 
然后把那个自行车，比如说。每每个自行车都安排好，就是在一个固定的地方放好。其实对于商家来说，就对于这个共享单车的从业者来说，他是没有选择的。他如果说想要产生规模的网络效应，他就必须得造更多的车，必须得让更多的用户看到。所以站在他们的角度，他们一定会选择说我做更多的车，甚至于说我可能在管理上我的成本会相对低一些，我不是那么那么管理，然后结果就到处都是，这个是必然的。With the number of shared bikes in the city approaching two and a half million, the Beijing city authorities decided to act. In early September, a cap was announced. For the time being, no additional shared bikes would be allowed into the city. In addition, designated shared bike parking areas have been laid out to encourage people to be more considerate about where they park. A new initiative is electric installations where users can get credit by parking within their boundaries. 这个小方块呢，就是我们公共电子围栏的核心装置，它是一个基于蓝牙感应技术的一个感应感应装置，在它的范围五十米范围之内，现在是有三十三辆共享单车，而目前我们后台可以感知到，真正停放在这个停车区内的，现在是只有四辆车，我们就会会把这些数相应的数据发送给共享单车的企业，由他们去做相应的这个调度以及引导用户停放的工作。啊、uh, ，So I think this form of regulation、uh, is help is helping the industry to be a more sustainable. Uh, into a more sustainable development. The bike sharing companies themselves are also doing their bit to clean up the streets. They have formed crews that roam the streets of the city collecting stray bikes, redistributing them and arranging them in a more orderly fashion. The shared bike craze has had an unexpected and positive side effect. The cleanup crews are providing work for people like Mr. Chen. Ofo has announced its plans of hiring one person per 50 bikes on the roads of China. With now around 8 million bikes in circulation nationally, they would need to employ 160,000 people. These people, in turn, make up one part of a sophisticated operation that relies on big data. Back at Mobike headquarters in Beijing, the company has a wealth of computers buzzing and processing the big data they've been collecting via their app. We're collecting a large amount of data, um, so, um, so we Based on the data, we build our uh, data platform called Magic Cube. So this platform will, will power us uh, with the uh, ability of um, leveraging the data um, to optimize our operation. A GPS tracker connects with the app to tell Mobike exactly where you go as soon as you pick up a bike. This gives the company a broad picture of the millions of routes being taken by its bikes in China's cities every day. With this information, it can work out where bikes are most needed and when. I can send some cars. I can use my 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 出行的过程中，它都能够跟踪你的这个出行路径啊。这样的话，其实你对于一个对于一个研究者或者是政策制定者来了解这个人的这个出行特征是很好的，因为出行特征了解了出行特征，你才能做好更好的规划和设计。Planning for bikes is something cities neglected in the rush to accommodate the cars that began taking over the streets of China in the 1990s. Nowadays, many major cities have broad roads with multiple car lanes, but no designated channel for bikes. The Shanghai government and Shenzhen government actually has recently done a study that after the introduction of the bike sharing into the city, in fact, the, uh, the, the traffic actually went down by more than 4%. That is quite significant, and it helps the city in reducing the congestion. So same thing with this kind of data, you can come in, uh, it can help the city planner to do uh, more city planning in terms of transportation.
bikes are at the forefront of the whole shared economy. Their success has encouraged entrepreneurs to come up with other ideas, such as shared umbrellas and battery packs for charging phones. With the necessary technology in place, there seem to be no limits to the shared economy. Megodakonsanti 未来这些硬件的揭露不管是现在揭露自行车还是未来揭露其他的形式的硬件的出行交通方式其实对我们来讲都是同样的一个平台式的揭露那将来可能你在你的手机里面你既可能是扫码完成这个租赁自行车也可
那么来一瓶凉水，三块哈。OK。China has been incredibly quick to accept online payment methods, and that's another reason why the bikes have become so popular so quickly. Because all you need to do to pay for their use is tap one quick button on your phone. And that button is very likely going to belong to a WeChat wallet, Tencent's virtual payment method. The tech giant chose to back Mobike in an investment round that raised 600 million U.S. dollars. But they were outdone a month later by Ofo, when Alibaba, the company which runs WeChat Wallet's biggest rival, Alipay, joined in a round of investments totaling 700 million U.S. dollars, the largest investment in shared bikes at the time. WeChat and Alipay account for the vast majority of online payment transactions. And with hundred millions of people in China using online payment, the two internet companies recognize the vast potential of shared bike apps to reach these people in an instant. So, what is the way forward for the country's bike companies? 那么他们可能基本上来说是三种结果，或者说，第一方面可能是上市，第二种可能性是合并，第三种可能性是比如说被更大的出行公司，比如滴滴。It's looking very much like merger is the future for the industry. The very first union in the industry was announced in October between U on Bike, which had gone public only a few months previously, and competitor Hello Bike. There have also been suggestions that Mobike's and Ofo's investors are discussing the option of combining the companies. While this would end their costly battle and create one single dominant player on the market, both companies are adamant they won't merge anytime soon, and are in fact both looking at a further round of investment. However, as the market matures and the number of players decreases, one thing is for sure: a free ride may be a thing of the past for Chinese consumers. I think there are there are merits for them to uh, to to combine. Uh, but I do not see a strong case that they must combine to be one because uh, I think uh, the market is actually uh, is can accept two player or three player in this as long as uh, 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 there are sufficient uh, buy in the market. So I don't see that um, by com combining the both company, uh, you create a lot, a lot of uh, sort of advantage for for, for both sides. Back in London, Ealing, the dockless bike story is just beginning. The launch of Mobike in the second city in the UK after Manchester is being celebrated, and everyone is optimistic for the future. We don't have the uh, Santander uh, dock bike hire scheme. It didn't come out this far west. Yeah, this is a great opportunity to have bike sharing, bike hiring, uh, but with a dockless system, which I think is the way forward for the future. You get your phone out, you scan a code, and away you go. It's just really easy. Uh, people are going to love it, and the same way that Manchester's taken it to their hearts, I think London will as well. I think the second stage, which they are now undergoing, is to expand. Uh, Bought this business idea and this uh, concept uh, abroad outside China. So, uh, in the in terms of investment aspect, we are very happy that where it goes now. But we think uh, it's still too early to mention uh, the success in terms of investment because uh, we think that there's still uh, some time for them to be uh, successful and uh, able to uh, monetize and, and profitable uh, yet. So. Uh, we, we, were, we were happy, but <laughs> we still be conservative on things of uh, our success story. Yeah. China has already learned a huge amount about running the business effectively. While there are still hurdles to overcome, it seems entirely possible that the coming years will establish China's shared bikes as something else the world simply cannot live without. <laughs>